Joe English here with EMAL Access. Today I talked with Scott Shanker from Microsoft about how they manage an entire portfolio of events and all the different audiences that they talk to. Let's listen in to the interview. Scott, thanks for joining me. How are My you pleasure. today? pleasure. Good. Good? Very good. So uh, we were at a little event last week um, that you put on, Microsoft Ignite. Um, that was a big one. 23,000. Yeah. 23,000. 23, an instant huge success for you. But, but you do more than Ignite. Um, we do. What, what, what else have you got going on, first of all, in terms of in your portfolio? Well, the last 60 days um, alone started with Convergence this mm -hmm. year, which was uh, a little over 12,000 in Atlanta. Yeah. That's our business decision maker event. Um, and the week before Ignite was Build, which is our developer event, which we intentionally co create a capacity of 5,000 for. Mm -hmm. And that was in San Francisco. So between those three events and those 60 days, we had a little over 40,000 live and a little over a half a million uh, touched impressions online for the keynotes alone. Mm -hmm. And content for all of those is on demand uh, through those various sites uh, as, as we speak and continues to go out. So, so how do you think across that whole portfolio as you're planning for your audience? Obviously, many of these people might come to multiple events. So, so what is your thinking in managing the whole portfolio together? Well, uh, and, and I appreciate the word, because it's very much a portfolio perspective for us. Uh, in addition to the BDMs, TDMs, and, and developers, we also have our partner event in July, WP, yeah. WPC. We have our internal sales event, MGX. Um, and on and on and on. So we have a, a number of events in the external audience portfolio. They're really, it, it's designed to, to, to address crossover, not to say that folks won't go to one or more, um, but we very much believe that it's designed to create the right experience for each target audience. So yes, you may have some partners who go to the partner event to hear how their relationship with Microsoft uh, can be a business advantage and they may also go to an Ignite to increase their readiness and their learnings about our products. They may go to a BDM event, but more often than not, you'll see an overlap in enterprise, but not an in individual. Mm -hmm. um, certainly our internal events are very different than our external events. So um, we build the portfolio to address the individual audience centricities rather than trying to do one event for everybody. Um, because in our case, one event for everybody would be almost impossible to, to, to stage. Uh, just given its size and scope and scale uh, of, of live participating audiences. The portfolio perspective is uh, more and more becoming the centerpiece of how we think about our events. Um, how they relate to each other, how they relate to our business, how they relate to our announcement cycle, uh, how they relate to what else is happening in that audience's world, uh, etc. So we're, we're taking a more crucial look at not only how does each event operate autonomously, but how do they align to each other and then ultimately how do they create optimization. So you're seeing um, customer stories repeating across but with a slightly different twist. How does this customer story work for a developer? How does this customer story work for the business decision maker? How does it work for the ITI? Um, and as we go into next year, which for us starts July, mm -hmm. uh, we're taking a, 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 an even broader view beyond our four or five key external events and our 10 or so internal events to how does this also fit with key first party, sorry, third party events mm -hmm. uh, like CES, like Gartner Symposium, like Mobile World Congress, like E3, like HIMSS, like NRF, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So now it's the portfolio view is growing to probably 50 or 60 key moments in time. Yeah. Um, and then, and uh, that actually makes it uh, both more interesting and more valuable to the attendee. Yeah. Talk about telling stories for a minute, because I know that's, that's, you mentioned this before, um, you used to really focus on products, and mm -hmm. I think you're focusing more on a story that brings those things together. Just tell me what you, how you react to that word. Yeah, I, I think, uh, well, it's, totally agree. Storytelling is both efficient and effective. Um, the shift that we've taken from many of our readiness events being product specific to Ignite was less about a shift in storytelling and more about a shift from um, our, our role as a company is to empower people to be productive and that is through the productivity side of their lives and through the platform side of their lives. And that means that the relationship between our products 
is more important than any one of our products. So using Office 365 on a mobile device or using Windows acro in, you know, across your device set or uh, the cloud value of OneDrive, et cetera, et cetera, is, is the story we're telling now. It's the reason the company reorganized itself uh, over a year ago into this one Microsoft mindset. Yeah. Um, storytelling is almost another layer on top of that. It's not the cause or the effect of the, the, the new Microsoft, quote unquote, mm -hmm. um, but it's certainly an important aspect of what we do. So more and more, you'll see in the keynotes, customer stories, we had Real uh, Madrid at, at Ignite, mm -hmm. we had um, Trek and AccuWeather and uh, Godiva Chocolates and uh, the American Eagle land speed record, mm -hmm. and all of these are customers of ours in some form or another, and we're making sure that those stories are being told every way we possibly can. Certainly in the keynotes, but then how does that extend uh, to the show floor? How does that extend to our breakouts? How does that extend to the PR that we're doing? How does that extend in, in every aspect? Um, and the, the power of stories is almost unquestionable. I mean, there's, there's times, there's some of our shows where I wonder whether we need an expo floor or whether we need a customer showcase. Um, and certainly at our third party events, we just had a huge success at Hanover Mesa, where we showed the Internet of Things in action through customers already using us, not through the theory of this is what this could do. And it's much easier for people to relate to and digest and learn from a story that they can say, hey, I, I get that, I understand that, now I understand how I can apply that to my world, uh, and we're doing more and more and more of that. Oh, that's great. Well, you guys are doing great stuff, and we hope to see, see you at some of your other events. Uh, but thanks for talking with us, and congratulations. My pleasure, yeah. thank you, appreciate it.